you know that um, officials of the Lagos State Ministry of Works, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Transportation, um, LASEMA, and our sisters from the federal agency, from the Federal Ministry of Works, um, um, the, the minister's office, they were all here later that day to do an on-the-spot assessment. Um, and so what had happened between then and now is that we have issued a seven days notice um, to all of the legal occupiers under the bridge. You've all gone around and you see the extent and the level of destruction. Very, very extremely unfortunate. Um, this is a clear testimony of how public assets should not be turned to. And so we've given seven days notice. And I want to reiterate, it's still on. So Wednesday is the deadline for everybody that has anything to have left there. The place is, is now going to, we're going to start extensive clearing of the place. It's after that, that we can even get all the structural engineers, you know, and all of the companies. This bridge was built by Julius Berger in 1974. So thankfully, there are still much around us. So it's only after then that they can even come and do the assessment. I cannot begin to speculate how long it's going to take or what form is the rehabilitation going to take. You know, that is for the experts to, to see. But if you look at it physically, there are extensive destruction. You can see the amount of concrete that the intensity of the fire had to raise up. And so it's not, it's, every, it's for all of us to see. But what we're about is to see how we can bring about as much as possible normalcy to to traffic and the people that uses you know this 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 bridge hitherto and you will begin to see almost immediately because i've seen it that we can still have access into lagos island using a co-bridge let me re-emphasize again that all of the traders i've seen all their signposts it's unfortunate you know they refuse to take care of public assets and all of the things that were happening under this bridge is totally unacceptable between between the last two years and now we've had nine eight fire incidents in our various bridges the one approaching you know um, um international airport the one going towards um uh, mile two the one going towards maryland sorry i'm um, going towards apapa we had an issue with with, with the one approaching from malacca at some point. so you've seen that everywhere and we cannot we cannot afford to obalinde similarly and so i want to use you men gentlemen of the press to let's pass on this information government is not about making life any more difficult for its citizens that's not the, the plan but it's for the for the citizens to to know that their commerce and their activity needs to be done in proper markets in places that have been designated as proper markets I will work with the special advisor CBD and the local government chairman. I will see how we we'll bring forward representative of the of the traders, and we can both identify where we can reallocate or relocate them to very, very, very quickly. And these are some of the things that we're going to do to ensure that you know they, they do not miss their source of livelihood. But to go back to how it's been done is to mean that we're just I mean we're being reckless, you know, because we cannot be assured of, 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 of the safety you know, of, of this bridge you know, if we have to take them back there. And so we'll go to Obalinde as well. And we're also going to repeat the same thing. It's about time in which we need to get people off under the bridges. Because once it happens, once things like this happen, it affects everyone. It affects the entire economy of Lagos. And that is certainly not acceptable.